Podcast is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, what I love about this time of the year is that I get to do some of my favorite favorites. And it's been a long time since I've had Mark Coker with us. But what really triggered me is the whole new array that they've developed for the Smashwords platform. So we're going to be talking about Smashwords. We're going to be talking about ebooks. And if you don't know Mark Coker, you should know him. And actually, what I love about him is he and I are on such the same page dealing with publisher predators. And maybe, Mark, we can kiss those before we leave the hour. Um, but <laughs> they are alive, well, and breeding, unfortunately. So with that said, Mark Coker is the uh, founder of Smashwords. He is the creator and brilliant host of the Smart Author podcast, which is really a, a master's cast, uh, class in ebook publishing. And if you have any questions, about ebook, uh, ebooks, publishing, what to do, how to launch, where to go, how to expand it, how to market. This is the go-to spot to be. It guides writers step by step from the very basics of ebook publishing to more advanced topics. And and he will tell you the response has been phenomenal, a, a gazillion ratings on Apple Podcasts, and averaging five out of five, which means they're always five. And if you want information on that, all you have to do is go to uh, the smashwords.com forward slash podcast and you'll get edited transcripts so you can really follow along. So what we're going to talk about today is because Mark is one of the most astute people I know in just general publishing. And even though his expertise and his real niche is his ebook, he stays abreast of all the industry trends. So, Mark, I would love, first of all, welcome to Author You, your guide to book publishing. Hi, Judith. It's great to be back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I thought I'm a miss not having you sooner. I have to tell you that. Um, and that uh, I, I would love to really jump into what is going on in the publishing industry today. The, the good, the bad, and the fabulous, and maybe the not so bad. How's that sound? Okay, well, um, why don't we start with the good? Yeah, let's do that. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, despite what everyone says, I think there's never been a better time to be an author. The opportunity for writers to reach readers has never been greater. Uh, so that is really exciting, especially when we contrast that with what the environment looked like 10 years ago when um, there was really only one path to publication, and that was working through traditional publishers, and traditional publishers were unable to say yes to every author. So now, thanks to the rise of eBooks, thanks to the rise of self-publishing, we've got um, every writer has the free tools and the access to distribution necessary to publish like a professional. So that's really exciting. I, so you know, when we talk about <clears throat> what's not going so well in the industry, I, I hope that we never lose sight of this fact that there's never been a better time to be a writer. Oh, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And and all the different avenues that we have, um, whether I think that one of the things that people really have to take a peek at um, and what's going on is the rise in audiobooks. Um, yeah. that, 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 you know, and that's one of those trends I'm sure you're going to kiss on. But that's certainly the player. And I, I just came out of the studio for my new book. Um, that I'm, any day is supposed to be up, you know, that people can get on my how to how to create a million dollar speech. Um, and, and I, you know, I actually I have to confess, I'm not an audiobook listener um, because I get sidetracked. You know, it's the squirrel factor. All of a sudden I'm starting thinking of a gazillion things. So I'm never in one place for that period of time. But what I do recognize is there is millions of listeners out there. 
And if you're not doing it, you're making a big mistake. Definitely, I would agree. You know, when we talk about bright spots in the industry, audiobooks are certainly one of the bright spots. Audiobooks are probably the fastest growing segment in the book industry today, um, growing around 30% a year. If the current growth trends continue just another three years or so, mm-hmm. um, we should see audiobooks, <clears throat> um, audiobook sales eclipse the sales of ebooks. So definitely uh, growing quickly and something that all authors should be looking at. Um, Audiobooks are certainly more expensive to produce because you you really need professional narration and editing uh, to do a a quality job. Um, But, you know, even these services are becoming more accessible and more affordable to more writers. Uh, We did a a deal with uh, Findaway. Um, several months back. So now Smashwords authors and publishers can click a button and with just a couple clicks, just launch their uh, audiobook production. So that's pretty cool. Um, So definitely audiobooks are exciting. Uh, When we look at the ebook market, um, the market, the the growth in the market really plateaued about four or five years ago. And we've seen the, the, the ebook market as a percentage of overall book sales remain fairly stagnant. For the last several years, um, we're seeing some of the major retailers uh, suffering um, on the sales side um, as a result of uh, Amazon's exclusivity practices. Um, So, you know, we've definitely seen, uh, you know, Barnes & Noble suffer. Uh, Kobo is definitely facing more pressure than before. Um, Apple Books, uh, formerly known as Apple iBooks, um, they're doing pretty well. Um, they launched a new store a couple months ago, and that's exciting, and we're seeing some good results from that. So I'm pleased to see you know, Apple stepping it up and, and um, launching a, a more formidable competitor. And what's the new store, Mark? What, what's that? What, what's the name of the new store? What are they, what's Apple called the new store? It's called Apple Books. Oh, just Apple Books. Yeah, and- so previously it was iBooks. Um, and the, the Apple Books app is native on every Apple device. Is it, is it automatically loaded then when you, no matter how old your device is? Um, if you've purchased a device over the last two and a half or three years, then it should be automatically loaded. If you have an older device and it's, it hasn't been updated, um, then, then you can go download the app. And that's free, right? Right, right. It's it's a free app. Okay, all right. Good to know. All right. So, what else is what are what are some of the other uh, certainly audio books? Big bright spot, and and I and I actually agree with you that they will equal ebook sales here in a few years. Um, you know, I, I'm I continue to be really excited about pre-orders. I know we spoke about pre-orders the last time I was on about 18 months ago. But we're we're definitely seeing as we you know look at the numbers that the books that are released as pre-orders are selling a lot more copies than the books that are simply just uploaded the day of release. Mm-hmm. Um, so every author should be looking at their publishing schedule for the next 12 months and get all those books up on ebook pre-order immediately. Um, pre-orders give authors a number of um, significant advantages. Pre-orders enable more effective advanced marketing of your book. Uh, Pre-orders give you um, an advantage in terms of sales rank, especially at Apple. Uh, Pre-orders help you catapult higher into the bestseller lists. Uh, So um, definitely take a look at pre-orders. And you mentioned the the, the podcast earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, Episode, uh, it's episode four of the Smart Author podcast uh, is titled How to Sell More Books with Pre-Orders. So take a look at that. It's just 23 minutes, and it'll, it'll give you a good overview of um, pre-order strategy and how to, how to make the most of them. I love that idea. And, and Mark, are you, is, is Smashwords, I only hear about pre-orders from you through the, uh, the Smashwords umbrella. Is, why is that? Why do we talk about pre-orders a lot? No, no. Oh, no, no. I get why we talk. I mean, I'm a big fan of pre-orders, but I don't hear others talking about doing pre-orders through e-books, using e-books. 
Well, that's true. You know, based on our latest research, um, probably it's it's close to 85% of indie authors are not doing pre-orders. So only 15%, very small minority of uh, author of the author the indie author publica- population are doing pre-orders. Yet when we look at those 15% or so of authors that are releasing their books as pre-orders, those authors are capturing probably over 50% of the sales. So um, it, it, it's, it's really mind-boggling that, mm-hmm. that more authors aren't taking advantage of this amazing best practice. You know, all, the, all the, the large traditional publishers know that you don't release a book unless you do it as a pre-order first. Um, so this is, you know, one of these, one of these uh, professional quality tools that um, has become available to the indie author community just in the last four or five years that most indie authors still aren't taking advantage of yet. Well, that is huge um, to take it to go through that. So, all right. Well, and it, and it, do you want to give for pre-order a one, two, three of what you should be doing? Uh, we've got about well, we've got one minute to our break. Is there something you can give us in that uh, one step, and then we'll transition? Yeah. Well, um, so you don't need to have your book completed before you establish the listing as a pre-order. So you can establish the listing up to 12 months in advance with Smashwords. Mm-hmm. We'll get that out to Apple, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Um, and while your book is up on pre-order, you can start marketing it and share hyperlinks with your fans on Facebook and across social media so that you can capture the reader's order at the moment you have the greatest interest and attention. Well, you know, I have to tell you, Mark, I love the idea of starting to do the hustle. <laughs> it is a hustle. <laughs> 12 months out. And yeah. I, I guess, you know, there's just really challenges for authors to think I can't do anything until I have everything all done. And they're just so wrong. They're so wrong. All right, we're going to take a quick break. It's all through you. You're going to be publishing. With me is Mark Polker. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com.
Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith bryles all righty. So with we have the fabulous Mark Coker, the visionary behind Smashwords, and there is huge, huge changes um, within the website. And one of the things I asked Mark to do when we were on break is when he was telling me about it, I thought, dang, we should be also telling all of you about what's going on there and why. Because, you know, one of the things, Mark, um, so many people think, People think, well, if if my if I just have my ebook up on Amazon, um, that's all I need to do. Let's tell them why they need to open up their horizons. <laughs> well, there's certainly a lot of authors that do make their books exclusive to Amazon, and what they're missing out on is the millions of readers that shop at other stores. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've always been a big advocate for making your book available in as many stores as possible. You know, every store that you can get your book into is another store that's out there working to connect your book with their customers. All right, so that will be one of my tweets. Uh, you know, why <laughs> ebook should be available everywhere, not just on the Big Apple. Yeah, There's- that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that as an author, you are the publisher. You are running a publishing company, and you don't want your revenue entirely dependent on a single sales source. So, Mark, with that with the concept, um, I, I know years ago that, uh, and I'm assuming it's you know the, that nothing's really changed. That people, when they go to Smashwords, they have options to to also where they used to be able to purchase you know through your gateway. Um, books at almost any portal out there. Is that correct? From Kobo to wherever? Um, well, not not entirely correct. Okay. So so our, our, primary, our primary business at Smashwords is distribution. So the books that are um, published at Smashwords are distributed to most of the major ebook stores. So Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, distributed to public libraries through deals with Overdrive and some of the other library aggregators. Um, But we're also unusual um, in the distribution business in that we also operate our own small ebook store, and that's the Smashwords store. And that's what you Mm -hmm. see when you visit the Smashwords homepage, and that's the store Mm -hmm. that we redesigned last week. Well, can we talk about that a little bit? So what's going on with the redesign? Sure. Well, you know, for the first 10 years of our business, uh, we – we displayed books on the homepage as they were published at Smashwords. So we we referred to this internally, affectionately, as the fire hose. So everything that came in in all its glory appeared on the homepage. Um, The downside of this approach was that it meant that uh, many – we weren't showcasing the best books at Smashwords. There was zero curation on our homepage, and we weren't putting our best foot forward. And so with this new redesign, um, we've added um, new curation, and the curation is completely automated based on which books are selling well across our distribution network. So these are books that have been endorsed 
by readers and their pocketbooks. Um, and so what you see now on the homepage, on the Smashwords homepage, is a beautiful array of books that are selling well across different categories. Well, and that's a plus. So, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and these are, again, again, I think we need to say for everyone, Smashwords is designed for e-books. That's, that's, you came out of the portal supporting the e-book world. Correct? Right, right. Right. This is an ebook store. Mm -hmm. um, nearly all of our books are available in multiple file formats. So it doesn't matter if you're reading on a Kindle or an iPhone. Um, you'll be able to read our books on any device. And then, and then, when people upload to Smashwords, um, which uh, which method, which format do they need to upload their ebook in? You have you have two options. Mm -hmm. The most popular option is to upload a Microsoft Word document. Mm. And you upload a Microsoft Word document, and then we will automatically convert it into multiple ebook file formats. So into Mobi for, for, for Kindle, into EPUB for the others, and then some other formats such as PDF and some HTML formats. So that's the, that's the most popular option. Uh, the advantage of uh, uploading a Microsoft Word document is that it's really easy to control uh, the design and formatting of your book, and it's really easy to update your book anytime at no cost, and you don't need to hire anyone to do that. You can do it yourself if you learn how to format your book on your own. The other option is to upload um, a professionally designed EPUB file. So EPUB is the open industry file format that every retailer uses except for Amazon. So you, you can upload an EPUB as well. So either, either way is, 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 is a good method to get your book up on Smashwords. So if someone is using, let's, let's, let's talk to the people who thought that Amazon was the only way to go. Um, and they are, if, if I recall correctly, Amazon is a Mobi files? Yes. Okay. So if, if they have a copy of their Mobi file, can you convert it to an EPUB file? Um, there are conversion programs out there that would allow you to convert a Mobi into an ebook file, but what I would suggest is that the author go to their original source file that they used to create that Mobi file. And most likely it was a Microsoft Word document. And use that for the conversion. Mm -hmm. Or, or for those who are listening in, who had people do their conversions for them. I mean, some of these books, you know, have a lot of images and things in them, um, and that it may it may make sense just to go back to whoever designed, if they had an outside person design it, and ask them to make whatever they did in the mobile file um, into an ebook file. It seems, my logic seems to tell me that would probably be the less pain and suffering. Yeah, you know, if you're not interested in becoming a formatting expert, if you're not... I uh, know. No, Mark, <laughs> I'm at the head of the line for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, there are, um, are low-cost professionals out there that you can hire that will do your ebook formatting for you. Um, at Smashwords, we have a list. It's called Mark's List, and you can find it at smashwords.com forward slash list. And these are all low-cost, independent freelancers. Many of them are fellow Smashwords authors. And, um, you know, for as low as $50, uh, they can format uh, a novel. Nonfiction is typically a little bit more, but it's not expensive. You know, if you only have a couple books and you don't have the time or patience to do it yourself, or if you're in a rush and you just want it done right the first time, then these uh, freelancers are a great, great, great path. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, since I'm going to get all my stuff up on Smashwords 2 um, and, and get that redone, you've, be, you've been helping me because I was, all my stuff came off when another group was, went away. And they, I think they took all their authors. They just took everybody down blindly and little did we know. Uh, yeah, well, that's what happens when publishers go under. Often their, their authors' books disappear. Yeah, we, we're looking forward to the day that all Judith Bryle's books are up there. Okay, so here's my promise. They'll be done by next week. How's that sound? Oh, that's a great promise. <laughs> so, since um, I just, don't, don't skip Thanksgiving, Judith. 
Uh, uh, well, no, I uh, actually, Mark, here's what's going to happen. When when we're done with this show, I am, I'm on the phone to the person who designed all my books and telling her, you've got a project. <laughs> okay. Well, happy Thanksgiving for her then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll do that. All right. So um, I, I think that, you know, all of you who are listening in, if you haven't discovered the Smashwords website, it is just a, a, a mind of, of information. An unbelievable, it's a gold mine. And that they have a fabulous ebooks, that the how to of just about anything you can imagine that you can download for free. Um, plus, just the tutorials are superb, really superb. So, Mark gets an A plus for what he's really done as, as the, I think, the leader of the pack. Um, plus, you can talk to people, real people. That's exciting to me. Mark, let me go back Great. to the industry savings. What other bright spots do you see out there? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that question. What other bright spots besides the audio books and your new website with the interfacing and everything that they can get? What other bright spots are you seeing down the pike? Well, this um, so this bright spot that I'm seeing is is more of a macro trend, and I think this trend will continue. Um, I'm just really impressed by the growing sophistication within the indie author community. You know, 10 yeah. years ago, um, when self-published authors first started making their books available as e-books, uh, there was no roadmap. Uh, no one really knew what they were doing. Um, and what we've seen over the last 10 years is that the author community has really embraced professional publishing best practices. We see that the quality of books is, is much higher today than it was 10 years ago. The quality of the covers, um, super important, much better <laughs> than it was in the past. Absolutely. Um, so that, I, that, to me, you know, speaks to an exciting future. Um, you know, we've we've gone from a the place 10 years ago where authors viewed self-publishing as the option of last resort to yes. today where many writers are viewing it as their option of first choice. So you know, Mark, exciting. I am on that. I am really on that wavelength with you. Um, and we're, we're going to take another quick break and let's come back and, and really kiss on that a little bit more. Why an author would choose this first versus last. All right, so I'll cool. see you your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Bryles. With me is Mark Coker, CEO of Smashwords. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. 
Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me, we're back with Mark Coker. And um, I'm all excited because I'm going to be getting all my books up here in the next week and getting all my instructions off to people to do what we need to do to make that happen. And um, one of the things, I mean, I think the best practices, because he was really kissing on how smart the uh, self small press indie author has become over the years where it used to be that if you self published, you were tainted, you had cooties. Um, How's that sound, Mark, basically? Um, yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, that you you that it was you know you had kind of little X um, across you, and basically you weren't good enough for a publisher. Well, here's what's happened, and that just publishing my 36th book next week, that um, I book number 18, I did the crossover and created my own imprint, Mile High Press, and people said, would you publish with New York again? And, you know, I used to laugh about it. And I said, well, if they paid me so much money, I wouldn't care how they screwed it up. So I guess maybe I would consider it. And the reality is, no, I don't want them to screw it up. And um, so I I wouldn't be going back because, uh, number one, it's like Mark said, that people are learning. Authors are learning about the business because publishing is a business. And I have really learned in the last 18 years Um, what publishing is all about. And I was publishing 18 years prior to that. But now, you know, when I started learning what the dollars and cents and what the tools and the components were and how to do it, I I don't think there's any looking back. I mean, have you had any other experience with authors that are that blunt, blunt? Mark? Um, certainly. Uh, we've, we've seen everything. We've, we've, we've got a lot of authors that used to publish traditionally, and now they never want to go back. We've got authors that started off self-publishing, then they did well in self-publishing, then they sold some books to the traditional publishers, and some of those authors are now hybrid and doing both. They continue to self-publish, and they work with New York, and then we've got other authors that left New York. Um, I, you know, I think the, you know, the way I look at it, is that you know no single option is right for every single author. Um, you know it's a lot of work to become a self-published author because everything is on your shoulders. But when you talk with authors um, who self-publish and you ask them why they enjoy doing it, um, they the, probably the number one most cited reason is that they enjoy the total creative control. It's their book. They control all the rights. If if they wake up in the morning and want to do a 99 cent promotion on their ebook. They can do it. You know, if you think about it, the author is spending all their time thinking about their books, whereas a publisher can't think about every author that they carry all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, they're focused on the the front list, what's coming out and what's new. They're not necessarily thinking, you know, how do we take this great author Judith Bryles and take her to the next level, even though her book is two years old. 
Um, so uh, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, in the romance community, um, we're seeing a lot of authors who've come to the conclusion that um, if they want to make money, then self-publishing is the way to do it. The, the self-published romance authors are really dominating the field at a time when the large traditional publishers are uh, pulling back from romance. And I think with what we're seeing in romance, we're going to start seeing in other fiction as well, where the publishers start pulling back, realizing that it's really difficult to compete against these indie authors. These indie authors are publishing books that are as good or better than what New York is pu putting out, and they're publishing these books at a fraction of the cost for customers. I love it. Don't you love it? I, I love it. Um, and they're getting them out there faster, uh, yeah. which is certainly interesting. And, and they're after time to market. Yeah. More responsive to readers. Yep. So, you know, well, it's, it, again, you know, self-publishing isn't for it, for everyone. Um, and I, I think, you know, authors are well, well served to keep an open mind. Um, you know, the, the exciting thing is that you can start writing a book today and with 100% certainty, you know that your book is going to be published one way or another. It's either going to be self-published or traditionally published. If you find, su su if you find success self-publishing, great. It's going to open up doors of opportunity on the traditional side. And, you know, I think authors should always keep their eyes open and ears open if, if a publisher comes along and wants to offer them a fair um, – a fair bounty for their rights. But if if the publisher's coming along and you've got a great book and they're only offering a couple thousand dollars for an advance to take your rights, then maybe that's not worth it. Yeah, and I think, yeah, that's that's just critical to look for. Um, I, I think you got to look at all the avenues. I think what's really important to really understand, like, your deal with Overdrive and what you've got going on with Apple Books and the area is that uh, authors are, um, if they're only going to go with one place, they're really, they're, they're really sabotaging their own book possibility because it could be the home run could be in another avenue that may not be the big A in the sky, but it could be, you know, one of your avenues that has that just the right person is there at the right time that starts the right level of chatter, that gets the buzz going, and then viral happens which I think is very cool. Yeah, and that's the way it works because what you'll find when you're distributing to multiple stores at once is that your book may break out at different stores at mm -hmm. different times for reasons that you can't even pinpoint. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've seen many authors you know, become bestsellers at some of the smaller stores before they break out at the larger stores, and other authors start big at the larger stores and then break out at the smaller stores. Well, I think one of the issues also that happens on this in the smaller stores is there that a buzz factor can start, and then you start uh, the big boys start paying attention. Maybe we need to do something here. Maybe we need to get involved. So I know that you know for for what you've told me about Smashwords, it it really is the largest distributor of self publishing ebooks. Is that correct? Is that still true? Yeah, we're we're doing over a half million books. That was the other part of the announcement last week. We surpassed 500,000 books live and published within our system. That's huge. And, and so, listeners, they represent over 100,000 authors. So if you're not on the platform, um, maybe this is going to be your holiday gift to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that when I go through courses or I do certain things, that, that this is an investment um, in me. And, uh, you know, what I'm taking away. So pay attention and, and what you can grab. And so uh, there's, you know, there's little nuggets everywhere. But this could be the gift that might be you all should be really planning. So what's going to catapult me as I come into 219? What will catapult me to another level I really hadn't experienced or thought about or envisioned? This could be one of the areas where maybe you just don't do Amazon um, which I think is a mistake. I think that you really need to learn that you need to have um, an affair willing to start up anywhere. <laughs> well, you know, I think I think every every author should be at Amazon without yeah. question. They're yeah, the largest so too. retailer. Um, but you're really shooting yourself in the foot if you're not making your books available at all these other stores. And uh, we can certainly help with that. 
Um, and even if you're already distributing uh, to the other stores, but you're not at Smashwords, at a minimum, you should be in our store. You know, our store is getting um, good traction. Our store has grown the last two years at a time when the overall industry has probably shrunk. So um, we're excited about that. We're excited about the, the tools that we've created for authors. Um, we've got tools that um, you know our, our authors and customers absolutely love, like the Smashwords Coupon Manager. And we've got um, automated merchandising programs. So okay. that with, a, with a few clicks, you can start merchandising your books. Would, would you talk about your Coupon Manager? I, I think you're unique in what you have there. Um, your ability there. I could be wrong, but I think that what Smashers offers in the ability to, to, to tag and get coupons out to people um, should be of interest, especially during any type of uh, promotional activity that's going on or gift giving time or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the Smashwords coupon feature um, is accessible to every author at Smashwords. It's fr you'll find it in your dashboard and basically, we give you the ability to set a special sale price for your book. You can do dollars off, cents off, percentage off. Um, and with a couple clicks, you can create this custom coupon code. And then you have a choice to make. You can keep the code private, so you send the code only to people that you, you want to see it. Um, like if you're using the codes for book reviewers um, or as gifts for your fans, um, you know, in exchange for signing up for your newsletter or whatever. Um, or you can make the coupon public. And if you make the coupon public, then your book is automatically entered into our um, our special deals promotion, which appears on our homepage um, and throughout the site. And so readers can shop special deals. These are books that are typically um, discounted exclusively at Smashwords. Um, and so that's a really exciting tool. Um, another cool capability with Smashwords coupons is that you can set a limit on the number of coupon redemptions. So let's say you want to add urgency to your promotion. You could post on Facebook that you know, the first 50 people to redeem this code can get this book for free or for 99 cents, and then after that, the coupon expires. So those are what we call, what we call metered coupons. Oh, I love that idea. That's, yeah, those coupons are a lot of fun. If you want to just run a, a flash sale and, and, and give your readers a reason to act now, not later. Uh, oh, you know, Mark, uh, yeah, we, we're going to take our final break, but I'd like to come back and kiss on that um, okay. because I think this is a terrific idea that you can run these kind of flash sales all, all the time. We'll be right back. It's all through you, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book. A book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. 
Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We of course offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, I love some of my, um, during the commercial conversations I have with my guests, and um, I feel that your all your ears are, were burning uh, because what we were talking about is uh, Amazon's practice of if they find someone else uh, that ha- is offering your book for a lower price, um, you you can get a slap down of some sorts, and and I never know which it is. So I ask that of Mark if you do these coupon sales or if you have a flash sale, how how do the big boys take it? And he said um, that because of the limited distribution for a flash sale. There might be some protection. Mark, you want to expand on that? Well, you know, it's a it's a common question for authors that have been browbeaten by Amazon's price matching mm-hmm. robots. Um, you know, they the authors will wonder if I do a coupon at Smashwords, is that going to trigger a price matching nasty gram email from Amazon? And I can say that for the last 10 years, um, I'm not aware of a single time that a Smashwords coupon has triggered a price matching by Amazon. That's not to say that it might not happen in the future if Amazon decides to pay attention to our store. But, um, you know, most of these coupons, if they're not a public coupon, if they're a private coupon, there's no way for Amazon to know about the coupon. Well, there you go. And, and unless they're going to side there, although I think their robots do scan Facebook and everything else. It's just wacko what they do. Well, what, you know, what they do is deliberate. Um, it's a deliberate strategy on their part. They want to be seen as the lowest cost provider to customers for mm-hmm. any product that they sell. That's mm-hmm. one of their key differentiators is that the price at Amazon is always going to be either the lowest or matching the lowest price. Um and so that's why they do the automated price matching. But unfortunately, a lot of authors get caught in that, you know, if a if if an author's retailer makes a pricing mistake or doesn't update a price quickly enough, Amazon pu- punishes the author. Uh even when the author presents evidence that it wasn't their fault and wasn't their intention. And it it happens. You know, actually, I had a personal experience, Mark, where um, I went to buy something on Amazon. I was shopping Amazon and I was looking for these little I have a a, I'm a cook and I had this special little jars for spices and I was went looking for them. And um, and I was dang, there were like twelve ninety nine on Amazon for four of them. And that, you know, these are empty jars. And I originally bought them at Ikea. And I said, there's no way when I bought these for four for three ninety nine initially. So I just couldn't believe it. So I went to the Ikea store and by God, I found four of them for two ninety nine. Plus, you know, paying my shipping for five bucks, two ninety nine sure beat Amazon's twelve ninety nine. <laughs> I did a happy right. day. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, before we leave, I would love, love, love to have you kiss on some of the predatory practices you're seeing out there right now. Because, we, you know, you and I both, I, I agree with you. I think these these authors want to have a better looking book. They're getting it. They don't want their book to look like they self-published it. 
They don't want that. They really do want a classy looking cover. They really do want interiors that are just not a bunch of text on it. Right. So, yeah, so, what, yeah. in terms of like, you know, what are the, the top best practices that, that authors should focus on? We, sure. We've touched on a couple of them right. already. Mm -hmm. well, so, what, yeah, what about some of the predators that you're seeing out here, though? Oh, uh, the predators. Yeah, the predators. Keep like away. author solutions. Oh, yeah. You know, and I have to tell you one, what I loved about Mark, I had him speak at one of my conferences years ago. And he decided to blast them, you know, and I'm cheering. I am cheering. I had one of my vendors was so upset um, that he named names like Author Solutions, um, that is the granddaddy of publishing predators, in my opinion, and that because they get business from Author Solutions. And my attitude has always been, and I said this to another colleague of mine, that if I'd known that Author Solutions was a sponsor, at this writing conference that I just attended, I wouldn't have gone. I, because right. I don't want people to get sucked in because I'm there and they're going because I'm there. And all of a sudden they get the lures out and the hook happens. I mean, I'm, I feel so, um, you know, uh, strongly about that. Well, and, and yeah. And I, and I share that concern. Um, you know, the, as an author, as a self-published author, you are the publisher. That means that you're responsible for cover design, editing, book packaging, marketing, distribution. You're in charge of everything. Um, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in authors hiring service providers and experts to help them navigate these waters. It really does take a village to professionally produce and publish and sell a book. But what we have here, um, you know, in the case of Author Solutions and, and in other, you know, predatory companies, there are companies out there that go out of their way to make all of this sound much more complicated than it really needs to be. And um, companies like Author Solutions overcharging for uh, what's often shoddy work, mm -hmm. um, using um, sales tactics that are not necessarily above board. Um, you know, calling their salespeople publishing consultants. No, they're not publishing consultants. They're salespeople. Um, you know, I, I'll never forget, you know, I have a, uh, an author friend uh, in Hawaii. He passed away a couple of years ago, uh, but he was in his mid-80s. And I, I, I was seeing him over the holidays and he was saying, Mark, I have great news. I've been offered a publishing deal by a traditional publisher. And I said, well, you know, great. Who's the publisher? And he said, Author House. <laughs> and my heart sank. Because Author House is one of the many, um, you know, straw men publishing imprints of author solutions and they are not a traditional publisher they are not going to pay you for their for for your rights um, these are companies that only make money when you pay them for the services uh, so I you know I think you know buyer beware um, check check you know before you hire a service ask for references check with your fellow author friends you know authors that have been out you know, the old-time indie authors that have been doing this for more than two years, they know about these predatory companies. Maybe they've used them in the past and had bad experiences with them. So, you know, check with your, your local community of writers and, and uh, you know, definitely kick the tires before you, you hire uh, one of these services. Well, you, you certainly have got to do at least a thorough Google search with the name and you put scam behind it and complaint and problems and lawsuits and rip off and all the yeah. other new words that you can come up with. And you have to make sure you are not a typical Google searchers, which means you only look at like 90 percent at the first page. You got to you got to dive down um, and figure out. Uh, you know, you, because they're smart. They can bury things. Mark, I'll never forget the time that someone called me because he was boning and groaning author. Uh, oh, no, he was with Ex Libris. I mean, Author Solutions has all kinds of stepchildren out here. And right, Ex Libris he, is one of them. 
Yeah, Ex Ligris, and you've got I Universe, and then and then my God, one of my button pushers is Balboa Press and Wespo. Those are two of my big button pushers that have arrangements with them. And that uh, I, I said, so why why did you go with them? Why why did you? I said you got to get out first of all. And I said, why did you go with them? He says, you know what? I just wanted them to stop hounding me. They were calling me several times a day, so he signed to get them to stop calling him. Uh, of course, then the upsales start. So it's, right. you know, it's stunning. Um, and you're right. They're not publishing consultants. They're sales. I, I'm seeing a whole new breed of predators coming up and uh, calling themselves self-published companies, which you still pay a buku thing. And I think one of the things that I see, one of the t- red flags I see is a gross uh, market, a gross overpricing of what they're telling you're going to sell your book. And of course, they'll give it to you for 50% off. So a book that probably might be selling for fifteen ninety five is priced at twenty eight ninety five. Well, here's what they're doing: you're never going to sell a book retail, people. What you're going to be doing is buying these books for fourteen dollars, the full price of what they should have been selling for. Never right. making a nickel, and you'll never be able to resell them, make anything. It's sad. Sad. Yeah, sad. They're, real, they're really they're really taking advantage of writers, um, and they're they're robbing people blind Uh, you know it really makes me mad when i see when i hear the stories when i speak with authors who you know shelled out five ten twenty thousand dollars on these overpriced services and you know it it harms people It, it, it 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 can derail an otherwise promising publishing career um you know, if you're spending that kind of money, most authors don't, you know, aren't made of money. And if they lose $10,000 by purchasing an overpriced marketing package, that could be the end of their career. Yep. And, 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 and if they're married, uh, married to someone who was doubtful, it reconfirms, I told you so. And that's not where you want to go. You can do this smart. There's help out there. Mark, we have about one minute left. Um, Any last-minute tidbit you'd like to leave them with? Well, you know, I'd really love for folks to listen to my podcast. You're going to learn evergreen best practices. The the stuff that you learn on the podcast, it's going to work for you 10 years from now just as well as it works today, and that's what you should focus on. Focus on best practices. There's no single magic bullet no single secret to achieving bestsellerdom. It's all about best practices. It's all about iterating and experimenting and always making everything that you do better and better and better. Uh, and that's an amen for me. <laughs> totally. All right. Mark Poker, CEO of Smashwords. Everyone, go to smashwords.com. Sign up for Mark's blogs. They're stellar, stellar. Look at the tutorials, the guidebooks, and get smart. And for heaven's sakes, get your book up on smashwords.com. And with that, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you, Judith. All right. Take care. All right, I'll Judith. See you next Happy week. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. All right. Take Bye-bye. care. Okay. All right, bye. For being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week.